everyone, uh, thank you so much for joining us today for our latest webinar, Good Health is Easy to Find, uh, where we're going to talk about uh, new hiring trends and tips and tricks on finding the best talent uh, for your business. Uh, my name is Sarah Mashoff. I am the Brand Marketing Director here at Phil Pulse, and joining me today is the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Mr. Rich Camacho, who is the CEO and co-founder of Blue Recruit. Hey, Rich, how are you? Hey, Sarah. Thanks so much for uh, for having me on today, and hi to everybody uh, out there uh, chiming in today. Awesome. Great. Uh, and also on the line is Miss Danica Jess. Um, she's going to be our moderator for the event, and so if you guys have any questions or anything toward the end of the uh in the, into the webinar, uh, just let us know and we'll make sure that those get answered. So what we're gonna cover today, uh, we're gonna look at some general hiring trends, um, how things are looking uh, for the trade industry in general. Uh, we're gonna talk about what it means to source the best talent and how to do that, uh, how to optimize things like your careers page on your website in order to make your business as um, appealing uh, to new talent as possible. And then um, my favorite part, the interview process, uh, figuring out um, how to make that go as quickly and as um, and as fast as possible in order to get everybody onboarded and um, working as, as, as quickly as we can. All right, so one of the really great things about just the trade industry in general is that it's pretty pandemic proof. It's pretty world ending proof because everybody needs a plumber. <laughs> Everybody needs an electrician. Um, it's, that's never really going to stop. And so a really great thing is that uh, the trade industry is, didn't slow down at all over the last two years. And in fact, it's continuing to grow. Things like the plumbing industry, the electrical industry, all those are growing between five and nine percent and are just going to you know, show absolutely no signs of stopping in terms of growth over the coming years. But one of the big um, challenges that's popping up and probably why a lot of people are you know, watching our webinar is because there is kind of that gap between finding new folks who have the talent and skills that everybody wants um, to kind of fill in for those who are leaving the industry. So say baby boomers who are retiring, you know, they're going all off to like golf land and <laughs> the beautiful beaches of retirement. And um, we just need folks to come in and, and kind of replace the talent that is leaving. And while the trades industry did see a lot of improvement during the pandemic, or at least they didn't lose a lot of um, momentum. We did lose about 4 million tradesmen um, who kind of left over the last two years that we also need to find replacements for. Um, and so that's what we're really gonna talk about today is um, how to find those at what can seem at times like a diamond in the rough in terms of those who have that skill and experience and the certifications that everybody needs. Uh, from your perspective, Rich, is there anything else in terms of the industry as a, as a whole that you're seeing that that also kind of contributes to how people are hiring today? No, I think uh, I think you really nailed it where the the ability to really recession proof our industry is very, very unique because, uh, you know, you mentioned everybody needs a plumber. Uh, I consider myself, you know, pretty handy. Uh, I can you know do most things around the house. I'm never going to touch the electrical system. And I'm never going to touch the touch the plumbing. If I can burn the house down or flood the house, <laughs> hey, I'm going to actually reach out to a, to a real pro. So uh, no matter how many you know Dewalt tools I might have in my garage, I'm never going to be a skilled tradesperson. And so uh, that's just an industry that's always going to be needed. And regardless of you know what what the the conversation might be out there, oh, robots are taking over our jobs. No, they're not. <laughs> like that's 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 not going to happen. And frankly, somebody needs to build the robots. And yeah, right. Build the robots because like, hey, has no one watched Terminator? We can't let robots start building other robots. Yeah. So yes, at the end of the day, yeah, for, forever growth. You, you nailed it. I think it's interesting too with like the electrical industry because that's turning into things like solar panels and all this like new um, renewable energy resources that that's going to even be because there's still about you know because of that it's seeing like that great growth but there's also it's got the largest need for jobs because it's got old school electric electrical needs and also this kind of new school renewable energy that's also coming into the fore. Yeah, uh, right now, solar in the streets, it's, I, I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's the fastest growing job in, in our state. It's the fastest growing job in eight different states across the country. And the average uh, new solar tech is 23 years old. Oh, so wow. clearly, yeah, th th there's no old solar solar panel installers. <laughs> yeah. uh, e Elon Musk is only so old. Right. Um, so, you know, yes, w one, one part of our industry might, you know, be outdated. Um, However, there's going to be the amount of technology coming out there, and those electricians are 
not only becoming, you know, really good at, at roughing a house, in a lot of ways in the future, they're going to become almost computer programmers and, and, and really high-end technicians. So the need uh, for highly skilled folks and highly trained folks is only going to continue to grow. Absolutely. So when we're looking at how to find those folks, um, particularly because we are seeing like that gap between the new folks coming in and the older folks leaving, um, what do you think is your, you know, the best places to start that journey? So say you do have maybe a couple of technician positions open. Um, you do want those with a particular set of skills. Like where does someone kind of start that, that journey of finding them? Yeah, I think, uh, when you're when you're trying out to go out there and source talent, you know, just just put out the feelers. I think one really important thing to keep in mind is that just like you wouldn't hire the same person to do every single job in your company, you know, you're going to need your journeyman, you're going to need your apprentice, and you're going to need your master. And so, why are companies trying to use the same platform or the same system? to try and hire all of them too. So like you wouldn't hire one person to do every job. Why are you trying to use the same system to, to find everybody? So I think people really have to look at the particular skill sets that they need for somebody mm -hmm. and then say, okay, uh, let's say we're an HVAC company and we need to go out there and source a salesperson. Mm -hmm. I would not use Indeed or Blue Recruit to go out there and find a HVAC salesperson. Mm -hmm. Go to LinkedIn. You know, LinkedIn is, inc is an incredible tool because you can literally not know somebody, but have right there in front of you, see exactly what kind of sales persona they have, what kind of content are they putting out there. Um, at the same time, if I'm trying to hire a, a service technician, I wouldn't use LinkedIn because frankly, why is a service technician spending a whole bunch of time on LinkedIn? Like that's not <laughs> how you're going how, how to become better yeah. in your role. That's where I would go to, you know, I hate to say it, where I go to Indeed. Uh, I prefer people go to Blue Recruit, but, <laughs> but re really be specific. And then if you're trying to hire, you know, entry level type folks, that, that, let's say, you know, what I highly, highly recommend right now, you have a training program within your company. You're going to bring in some more general labor entry type folks, build them up the way that you want them. Go to local high schools, go to community colleges uh, for on campus events, and you're going to find some great people that they might not have the skill sets, but they have the desire. Obviously, they're trying to educate themselves and work hard and, and bring them on that way. So mm -hmm. there's no like one perfect answer and, and fits all situation. It really depends on, on what you're looking for and where you should then go. I love that idea of going to um, like tr going to high schools and um, and community colleges because they don't really talk about it. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're seeing such a gap in the trades is because we just put such a heavy emphasis on you need to go to college, you need to get a four-year degree and you need to do this. And we don't really say, hey, you can actually get a really good, well-paying, satisfying job um, if you just go learn a skill, if you go learn literally a trade. So I do love that idea of kind of going and doing that grassroots effort of <laughs> like getting, you know, going out and grabbing these kids when they're younger and being like, hold on, you don't have to go into like hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt to have a really good career. You can actually just come, come with me. <laughs> No, it's uh, it's crazy. Like uh, my, my next door neighbor, he's a, he's a plumber. He's a, he's a master plumber, uh, runs a nice little, little company out of his garage. He's got 10, uh, 10 guys that work for him and he's doing a really, really fantastic business. You know, mm -hmm. uh, he's terrible at invoicing because he's come over <laughs> to my house and a bunch of work. And uh, I have to remind him like, Hey man, you're going to send me the bill. Like, Oh yeah, 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 I'll get around to it. Like, dude, I don't know how you run your business. Um, but he's a fantastic plumber, mm -hmm. but it's, it's funny. You know, we look at, um, you know, I, I say my generation, I was told by parents, coaches, teachers, the only way to succeed in life is to go out there and, and get a four-year degree. When in reality, and it was almost like the trades, the community college, that's where you're going to go because you kind of failed in high school. Yeah. And, and it's a lower class and it couldn't be more wrong. Uh, you know, I, I went to four-year college. I'm a, I'm a degreed civil engineer. I've never built a bridge. I shouldn't build a bridge. And I think the most I've ever used my degree for it was my chickens have the nicest coop I've ever seen in my, in my life. Yeah. So like, yeah, encouraging young kids. And my COO is actually part of a study that found that the ideal time to introduce your business to a young person is in the eighth grade. Oh, wow. because, and, and it sounds absolutely crazy. Like talk about building out a talent pipeline, mm -hmm. but what, what the study found was that during high school, you know, 14 to 18, kids are so in, inculcated with the, you got to go to four-year college mm -hmm. that if you go, go to them when they're a senior, it's too late. Like, no, yeah, my mom said I have to go to oh, college. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's super interesting. Well, I mean, I believe that, you know, like they, 
you know, literally didn't tell us anything about a career. And so you hit, you hit 15 and suddenly it's, you know, Hey, go, go do this. I mean, I'm an English major, <laughs> you know, I did that great thing, you know, graduated in 09 English. Everyone was like, you're never going to work again. <laughs> uh, so, my, my wife graduated in 08 with an interior design major. She's like, cool. I'm never going to get a job. Yeah, no, uh, not, not all, like, <laughs> no one, no one's even buying houses, yet alone redesigning them. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. And yeah, if you come in and you look at, especially with all the new technologies coming up, like solar panels and, and anything like that, there's just so much and they're so high paying. And I think that's what people also don't realize is because, yeah, there's this cultural bizarreness to, you know, pushing for your college and then pushing all these other real, like very well paying careers just kind of to the side, like, you know, yeah, you failed or you didn't get good enough grades. And so you have to do this. So yep. yeah, I think encouraging children, you know, even very young to really see like, cause they, kids love plumbers too. Kids dress up as plumbers. They dress up as, you know, folks, you know, for Halloween and stuff. So they really have that, that interest when they're younger. So cultivating that and that talent pipeline is a great idea. So when we're talking about like do's and don'ts of talking to people, um, I think this is one area that people probably do um, and I do struggle with, and I'm actually really curious what you think about, like the, the dues kind of make sense, you know, make sure that you have a competitive salary, make sure that you have flexible time, but the sign on bonuses and unlimited PTO sounds like a really great idea on paper. Um, what's your perspective in terms of why those things maybe aren't the incentives that you think they are? Yeah. So, uh, do not offer sign on bonuses. Do not offer unlimited PTO. Like it's very, very rare to be able to make a universal statement, like never do this. Like, hey, look both ways before you cross the street. Like definitely do that. Don't give sign-on bonuses. <laughs> um, just study after study after study, uh, both scientific and non-scientific is, is clearly showing that it's simply not having the end goal. The, the end goal shouldn't just be to hire somebody. Mm -hmm. It should be to bring someone onto your team and have them build a career long-term. Because frankly, uh, hiring is great. If, if the door is just spinning at the office and folks are constantly going out, the amount of, of wasted money, wasted time, wasted effort, it's, it's gonna destroy your business. Um, and unfortunately, sign-on bonuses are just going right after a basic human instinct. Like put yourself in the role of that job seeker. You got hired, you got given a 5,000 drive, $5,000 sign-on bonus, maybe it was at 90 day, 180, whatever that is. You, you reach that 180 day part. Hey, I got my $5,000 check. I have a family. I've got two kids at home. What's really keeping me there intrinsically if there's three more companies down the street that are also offering sign-on bonuses? Mm -hmm. um, it's, and, and you almost can't blame the individual for saying, hey, thanks for this. I worked hard for 180 days. You gave me the money but I've got to do what's best for my family. Mm -hmm. And if everyone's pretty much paying the same, offering the same uh, bonus potential, uh, the same ability to move up, that sign-on bonus is just going to keep pulling people. And unfortunately, your money is no better than somebody else's money. Yeah. And, and folks, are, it, it's just causing a constant rotation of people. And, and frankly, it, they can't be blamed for that. Absolutely. Is there a way then um, to kind of supplement outside of maybe the more basics like flexible time as you're kind of delivering that message to people that really just find those who are in it for the long haul? Yeah. So where, where we have really seen that the most success and it's backed up by several studies is that people often don't associate the trades kind of like our, our last previous slide we were just talking about, about, hey, don't, don't go become a plumber because it's really bad. That means you failed job satisfaction also hasn't been pushed enough in the trades. Like there is something, I, I think it goes with everything. If you're a baker, if you're a carpenter, when, you, when you're done and you can literally hold what you just built in your hands, like that's an intrinsic, incredible job satisfaction. And uh, right now, except for millennials, I, and millennials basically just screw up every single day. But, <laughs> but every, other, every other group of American workers, except for millennials, because of course millennials just do whatever they want, um, actually views job satisfaction as more important of a reason to, to choose a, a career and choose a particular job with a company than pay, which is absolutely contrary to what we think because you think I work so I get paid. Well, actually, Humans love to work to build and, and, and receive satisfaction for what they're doing. And so companies that are really highlighting that are really bringing in people that are designed to work for someone for the right, for the right role. Unlike say unlimited PTO, it's a really quick way to like kind of capture why unlimited PTO 
Um, although it sounds great when, you know, when it's said like, oh, cool, I can take all unlimited time off. Again, go back to human nature. How many people are tired? Nobody, no one, no one in their right mind is going to do that. And every single time it's looked at companies that offer unlimited PTO, opposed to say, you know, 10 days off or 14 days off, mm -hmm. their employees actually take less time off than companies that have a set benchmark. And, you know, kind of going back to competitive salary, it's actually <clears throat> cheaper uh, to offer additional days off. Say, you know, let's say somebody is making $25 an hour. It's less expensive for a company to give somebody five additional days off. So let's say you go from 10 to 15 mm -hmm. than it is to give them a $1 an hour pay raise. So five extra days off is going to cost the company a little bit more than a thousand bucks. So it's almost twice the amount of pay, but like, ooh, 15 days off, right? As I start, that's awesome. Yeah. And that's actually more, more beneficial to people than a $1 pay raise. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a way to offer incentive that is both beneficial for your business while also being beneficial to, to the, the person without necessarily having to just throw money at the, at the situation. Oh, absolutely. Exactly, exactly. So in terms of communicating that, um, in terms of like things like, collateral that you use, particularly your careers page on your website. And if you don't have a website or a careers page, you should. <laughs> Best way to market your business. If you don't have, if you don't yet have a website, um, absolutely get a website. But if you, and if you do have a website, absolutely put a careers page on there um, because that's how you can market to both customers and potential talent. Um, it's the best way to ensure like trust with people, um, talent and customers. So absolutely get that started if you haven't already. Um, but the one thing that I really think is interesting about, you know, even the list we have here is making sure that things are mobile friendly. And I think that goes back to what we were talking about in terms of bringing in these younger folks, because, you know, everybody, you know, even the annoying generation of millennials, <laughs> everybody, you know, is on their phone at this point and they want to do everything on their phone. They don't necessarily want to have to go to like a desktop and, and find their laptop and do things. They want to just be able to like sit there and do that. Um, so I kind of like the idea with Blue Recruit, how you guys kind of take the long application process out of it. Um, kind of talk to us about, you know, how, um, you know, job seekers are seeing that and how they're utilizing that and why they like that so much versus maybe having to sit down on a desktop and fill out like a really long application that asks them like every question under the sun. Yep. No, um, a study got done a couple of years ago. It's about a three-year-old study now by Sharon. They're, they're kind of like the AAA of the HR world. Like if they say it, that's that's a new law in HR land. Uh, everybody loves HR land. But they came out with a study that found that with every additional page on an online application, you were losing about 20% of the applicants. So every single time someone had to click on next page, uh, by another 20% of those people applying like, forget this, this is, this is ridiculous. And so if it was more than three pages long, you'd already lost more than half of the people that even found your website. Like, hey, awesome, your, your search engine optimization did a great job. You brought people to, to the website. By the way, you probably paid to get those people to your website with, with, a, click, uh, with a clickable ad. And then they started doing your online application and then you lost them and you're never gonna get them back. And, and it's just like, what a huge waste of money and that same study also found that the lower somebody's level of education or the lower their income, mm -hmm. the more likely they are to be applying uh, for a job on a mobile phone opposed to a desktop. So, you know, let's say you're a construction company looking for an entry level uh, general laborer. There's a good, you know, that's a relatively lower paying job, not that, not that it's anything bad, but they're just trying to start their career. Chances are that person's gonna find you on mobile and apply for your job on mobile. So having that complicated online application, or if, if you're asking them to submit a resume, just not gonna work because I don't, I don't have a resume on my, on my mobile device. How, many, how friendly is PDS really on a mobile device? Right. So that's why it's all about being extremely mobile friendly, extremely short to get the information, the absolute necessary information you need to then go, go ahead and connect with them. Absolutely. And when we're thinking about even 
like social presence and what that means for you kind of so when you're looking at both your careers page and your social media those two should almost go in line right in terms of that messaging that we talked about earlier you know and if you want people to know that you may not offer a signing bonus but you offer extreme job satisfaction that's where you can come in and you can look you know don't use stock photos use photos that you know, or of your team, you know, make sure that you see people on the job, they're having a good time, they have that good culture. It's just that place of really showcasing that you are a really good place to work. Um, is there other things that you think, though, that we need to look at in terms of social media and the kind of the do's and don'ts in terms of, you know, showcasing the type of business that you are? Yeah, uh, th there was a, uh, you know, especially for companies that are trying to go after, you know, a younger pool, those Gen Xers, millennials, the worst, <laughs> uh, you know, if you're trying to target them, they found that 90% of people, and I'd say, I, I want to get the actual exact age here. Really not, yeah, 90% of folks under the age of 49, when they're applying for a job, they're going to go and try, if there is a social media link on that website, they're going to click on it because mm -hmm. they want to see a presence. And what they found was if you have that link, well, okay, let's click on Twitter or Instagram, what, what have you, and your last post was six months ago, that level of credibility and trust just plummeted because to them it's like, wait, why aren't you on social? Why aren't you, why aren't you open to sharing what your company is doing? Why aren't, why, why aren't you proud of this? And that credibility instantly drops. It's almost as bad as, uh, you know, not having your domain on an, on an email address and having like a Gmail or a Yahoo, like boom, instant drop in credibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just funny. So it's, it's those little simple things that aren't expensive and it's just a matter of effort um, that could just skyrocket the level of credibility. Cause as we all know in the trades, in construction, it's all about trust. You know, how do most people get get jobs in our industries? Their friends connect them, yeah. and their friends know a role. You trust that friend. Your platform, your website, has to be on that same level of trust as that friend. What do you think reviews play, kind of within finding folks? Like reviews play a really hard, good level in getting customers. Do you think that employees also like potential look at reviews just to kind of see what folks are saying outside of it, or no, not to, more social media? So I, I will never trust, uh, and, and maybe it's, I'm just very jaded, but like, let's, let's, uh, glassdoor.com, for example, mm -hmm. or, or, uh, the new one fishbowl, something like I can't remember, but glassdoor, obviously, you know, it was designed so people can start leaving reviews and the interview process on companies. They're not kind of transitioning to other things, but when I look at it and I try to be it through an unbiased lens, why if I'm just a job seeker and I interviewed for a company and didn't get it, what would motivate me to then spend time to go to glassdoor.com and fill out a whole survey? Like what normal person, like the same people would do that as the ones that keep the extra buns when you buy a t-shirt. Like you're a weirdo. <laughs> yeah. Like who's doing that? It's very, very disgruntled employees that mm -hmm. are probably leaving for a really good reason or people within that company that are trying to push up their, their own star rating. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm very weary of reviews when it comes to interview process and whatnot from those kind of third parties. Because again, you got to look at the motivation. Like why would somebody spend their free time to go do that? Mm. Gotcha. Okay, so it's best to spend your time like putting on Instagram, Facebook. You don't necessarily yep. have to do a whole glass door, you know, account and, and get people to like leave reviews and stuff that just, you know, kind of push your concentration more on the, the places that people are going to build that trust. Exactly. People, mm -hmm. people you know, it, I don't know if it's, if it's justified, but people trust their Instagram feed a whole lot more than their glass door. Oh, no. I mean, yeah, it makes sense, though, because, yeah, you just there's a little bit of like, yeah, <laughs> something's being manipulated within yeah. that, obviously. So this is one one place that I really like. I really want to like delve deep into the interview process, because I do think that's where people struggle a lot is figuring out because everyone likes to interview differently. And I do think that it can make or break um, bringing in new talent or discovering new talent. You can maybe you know, if the interview process is way too long, it's way too complicated, it can actually turn off really good employees or make you not see the value in a really good employee um, that maybe you might dismiss offhand or whatnot. So in terms of like, say, four interviews, is that what you recommend in terms of like, that's the, the core amount or do you think it should even be less? So the number one thing, especially right now, is that the, the entire interview process <laughs> has to be less than two weeks. Um, if you, if you're lucky enough to, to grab somebody's attention, that is a high quality candidate, 
if you can't from start to finish, you know, and finish being there, they're an employee of yours. If you can't get them in the door within two weeks, they're gone. Uh, there's simply too much competition out there for them. Uh, where the four interview kind of process comes from is actually a huge study that was conducted by Google. Obviously, Google has way more resources than any, any other company will yeah. ever, like, okay, maybe Apple can, can run it too, but none of us will ever have the resources of the amount of data that they have. And they did a really interesting study. And the cool thing about this is that, yes, obviously Google was looking at like computer programmers and IT people and sales folks and whatnot, but the findings work regardless of industry. It's just a matter of human behavior. And what they found was in, for a lot of roles, Google was doing like 11, 12, 13 interviews. And they finally decided after years of doing this, like, hey, let's go ahead and map out like the number of interviews that we do on a particular job a candidate and whether we actually hired them and if they were a successful hire. Mm -hmm. And what they ended up was this graph here. And, and they found that after four interviews, they knew 86% of the time that that person, whether that per, after the fourth interview was going to end up being a successful hire or not. And you can see all those other dots are more interviews. And you know, when it goes out to 11, 12, 13 plus, it was barely even moving the needle. So they were taking, adding weeks to the process, having way more man hours, way more costs, and it was going to like the low 90s. So that's where this idea of four interviews came and saying, hey, if you basically can't determine somebody yeah. within four, you're, you're not gonna be able to. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. In terms of kind of looking at that, though, when we're kind of because a big popular trend is to panel people, uh, to bring people in, have them meet with them. Is there like a certain core people in your business that need to be on that panel to avoid, you know, like not everybody <laughs> needs to like sign off on Greg to yep. <laughs> to become, um, you know, I guess I guess maybe dependent upon where they are in the company. But certainly for like maybe like the construction workers who are coming in as as maybe those lower those like newer skilled laborers. Um, do you think that there's like a certain type of person within the company or people that need to be that they had to have those touch points in order to keep it as minimal as possible. So one really cool thing uh, to go with that, that after they determined that four interviews was the ideal, they actually took that information and went, went, took, it, took it a step further and found out that if you just do a panel interview of at least four people, you're going to get almost the exact same results. Hmm. So when you kind of look at, let's say, you know, we're a, we're a 10 person plumbing company. Um, somebody finds, you know, Joe on, on a job board somewhere, calls up Joe, they do a quick phone screen. Hey, that's one interview. You then say, Hey, Joe, we'd love to have you come in and you're able to get yourself, maybe two other folks. So it's three of you from the company, you know, 30% of the company. That's, that's, that's a good pool. Uh, the three of you do a panel interview. That is now your four interview process. So it's still hitting mathematically or statistic wise, however you want to look at it. It's still hitting those numbers. And then right there, um, what I would recommend, you know, if possible, is to have what I call a meet the team. And one thing that I, I have seen, you know, people try this is, you know, they'll do their, their three, four person panel interview and they're like, hey, come on, come meet the rest of the team. And they kind of walk around the garage or around the work site. Mm -hmm. But it's not an intentional process. You want them meet the, to have them meet the team be an actual planned event. Mm -hmm. And to really meet people, because, you know, frankly, especially in construction, like you might put your life in some of these people's hands. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, it's yeah. not it's <laughs> not just like, oh, yeah, I met Joe. Like, no, you want to make sure that this is going to work out. Mm -hmm. And so make an intentional process. If it has to be a, a, a whole other event to bring them in, so be it. But try to at least plan it for, for that same time. So you, again, speed up the process. Um, and then what I always love to do, especially if you're hiring, like, like we said, like an HVAC salesperson, mm -hmm. take them out to a meal. Yeah. There is no process that we do every single day. Uh, it's, it's, it's part of our human behavior. And one really cool thing about it is because it's such a natural, you know, routine for us, we try, we tend to lay down our guard you know, guard that people can have during an interview and really get to meet people. You get to see how they interact with other people in public, how they treat the wait staff. Yeah. And um, yeah, the, the founder of Home Depot, he preaches it. So frankly, I would have loved to have found it. <laughs> I'll take his, I'll take his advice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, you, I mean, that, that works on multiple levels in life. Yeah. Always, if you need to get to know someone, take them to dinner and see how they treat other people. Yeah. That's, that's all you need to go to dinner and a movie on dates. 
Yep, exactly. Take someone on a date, see how they treat the wait staff. Because yeah, if you can't treat someone well who's serving you, you absolutely are not going to treat people well in general. <laughs> how do you think people, especially in like, you know, we're talking over Zoom, that's been such a big like buzzword over the last two years. Uh, maybe for some business owners who might be a little wary of video, is there any kind of tips and tricks on, on you know, meeting people maybe through through Zoom and then kind of how to then take that into maybe more of an in-person meetup? Uh, so I, I'm probably one of those people that I'm a good example of somebody who has accepted the video. Um, <laughs> you asked me three years ago, hey, meet somebody over video, do an interview, get everything started. I'm like, no, I'm not going to meet them over a video. Like, I want to shake their hands and, and talk to them and whatnot. Uh, on Blue Recruit, for example, we actually have a portal where we can do video interviews. Um, obviously, the pandemic changed things. And it forced a lot of us to just accept video. And with time, I think everyone's just gotten more used to it, more comfortable with it. Uh, I would never, absolutely never, 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 again, back to these universal statements, uh, if I'm trying to hire a diesel mechanic, I'm not only going to do a video interview. Like, sorry, buddy, but I trust what you're saying. I want to see you actually work on this engine. Um, <laughs> I want to see a carpenter actually utilize equipment. So while the video interview, I think, is more effective than a phone screen, it's only part of that process. I think it's a good way to reduce wasted time. Um, you know, if you can find five folks that are look like potential candidates, get five of them a, a video interview for 15 minutes, cut that, that down to three, and then bring those three people in for mm -hmm. a panel. And you've already saved a tremendous amount of time and resources. Absolutely. Yeah. And that doesn't helps towards the two week thing too. If you're making sure you're not trying to bring in five or six people, three of whom aren't even going to be a, a fit, nope. then you, you know, you've saved yourself time. The people who you're you know, the panel and the folks that you're meeting on the team. So yeah, it's a good. good and point. they'll better, they'll leave you a better glass door review. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right. So um, talk to us a little bit about Blue Recruit, you know, things that you guys offer, how you can kind of make the whole process a lot easier for folks. Yeah. So uh, we actually got started, my father-in-law, uh, really the best way to explain Blue Recruit is that we are match.com for plumbers. <laughs> um, I used to, I used to fight it. <laughs> Try to explain that way. One of my junior sales guys was always used to say, I was like, dude, stop saying that. And then after time, I was like, no, that's exactly what we do. <laughs> so yeah, my father-in-law, he, uh, he's retired now, but he had a couple auto body shops down in South Florida and he was trying to hire an auto body painter. He called me up one day because I, I, I was in traditional kind of uh, executive recruiting for, mm -hmm. for military veterans. And he's like, Rich, what did I do wrong? I just went to Indeed. I put out a job post for, a, I'm trying to hire an auto body painter. And I just got 80 resumes for house painters. Mm -hmm. He's like, a house painter can't paint a car. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I'm like, I never really thought about painting, but no, I guess a house painter cannot paint a car. Yeah. But then uh, we realized that we're basically trying to hire carpenters, plumbers, welders, the exact same way that we're trying to hire IT sales folks. Mm -hmm. And while both of those careers are great, they sh again, it's not all a one size fits all. So we created a platform where you know, a welder can go on there and say, I have an AWS welding, certified welding inspection license. I'm in Dallas, Texas. I'm looking to make this much per hour. And it creates a profile. And then an employer says, hey, I need an AWS certified welding inspector in Dallas. I'm paying 40 bucks an hour search. And then we can match the two people together. They can go ahead and start chatting with each other. They can do a video interview and hopefully uh, start, a new, start a new role. Awesome. And so these are just a couple, I think, just looking at, you know, how the platform works. So definitely all the different areas. What's personal care? Can I ask that? Like, what are you, what would that be? Yeah. So uh, probably not affecting most of the folks on here, but nail technicians, cosmopolitans, barbers. I had no idea how many, how intense it is to become a licensed barber in those states. <laughs> I believe that though. <laughs> it, it's an insane. Like, People think that becoming like a master plumber is intense. Like he's just cutting my hair, but no, there are so many certifications, hours upon hours of, of, of training and like to, to achieve licenses of, uh, you know, massage therapists, things like that. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. You've got to be trying to get a good fade. Like, come on, you're dealing with the guy's hair. <laughs> no, absolutely. I just wear a hat all day. So <laughs> I know most plumbers are like, I'm just in my hat. Like, what? <laughs> So for Phil Pulse, um, you know, once you guys get everybody hired out and you are probably going to realize that, Hey, there's a lot of time. I know you're mentioning, um, your neighbor who can't do invoicing to save his life. 
uh, Phil Pulse is a great opportunity for that. So um, we do everything from invoicing to estimates and then um, uh, and then scheduling out all the different folks that you're inevitably going to hire from Blue Recruit. So um, if you'd like a demo, just head over to philpulse.com and, and we can have someone you walk, walk you through the, the platform and all the different features that we have. And on top of that, um, if you're not quite ready for a demo, we have uh, some really great hiring resources, some in-depth uh, places that you can go to really see the ins and outs of hiring, um, our ebook for the essential guide to hiring for the trades. And then we have our business playbook uh, where it goes over everything from what we just talked about to even the onboarding process after you've hired someone, just to make sure that they're uh, getting the most um, out of that process so that they stay long-term. All right, Danika, do we have any questions? No, it actually looks like you guys did a great job of answering everything. I'm not seeing any questions. Okay, awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much, Rich. This was a lot of fun and we learned so much and it's it's been really great to see exactly, you know, what people can do to, you know, kind of overcome these challenges that we're seeing right now within the trades. Uh, we definitely hope that, you know, people will start that talent pipeline of starting earlier in school and really encouraging people to, um, to not necessarily just think the future holds a four-year degree, but that they can absolutely um, become, you know, part of the trade community. Uh, any other last words? No, just thanks so much for, uh, for having me and uh, everybody work safe out there. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if you have any questions or want to know more about Blue Recruit or Field Pulse, uh, you can head over to bluerecruit.com or fieldpulse.com and either of us will be happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much. Bye, y'all. Bye.